Uh, ma'am, I'm not sure if we, uh, I, others are able to hear you. I'm not able to hear you, ma'am. You can't hear me? No. no. Now we can hear you. <laughs> we are not audible. Oh, now I can hear you now. Yeah. So I couldn't I was, hear you. Oh, my, and I was talking and... Uh, Oh, okay. All right. I'm so sorry. Okay. I hope every, I'm audible now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you, Abni. Thank you for being my true guide. <laughs> okay. So, as, okay, so I'm going to start. My from pleasure, the beginning. ma'am. <laughs> okay. Hi, welcome to everybody. Hope everyone's okay. All doing good. Welcome to all, all students, online, offline, e-learning, everybody. Welcome. Okay, so um, uh, we, we've been doing special issues in counseling and uh, we, we did a couple of um, uh, issues in the last couple of uh, weeks. We started off with mental health, briefly looked at marriage and family. We looked at um, abuse last week. And today we're going to look at something that's extremely important and that is suicide. Okay. And uh, uh, I think one of the uh, one of the most dreaded moments of being a counselor or being someone in ministry or even being, you know, having uh, just just being a person who relates with others is receiving a call from someone who is suicidal. Uh, you probably may be meeting many people you know and that you meet every day may be battling severe discouragement and depression depression some often feel uh, like their life has uh, you know that they haven't even been living some uh, uh, just feel they need to eliminate the pain uh, and they 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 often feel that their pain is more difficult than actually killing themselves so when we look at suicide in itself, it is the uh, it is the uh, third leading cause of uh, death, uh, especially among those who are in the age group of um, you know the the uh, the younger age group, the ten to twenty four age group, and you will see or, or the you know the period of adolescence. Uh, that's the th it's the third leading cause of um, uh, uh, in in that specific population, and uh, we do see that a lot of lot of times. And I think you know every year there is a good percentage of those who uh, are brought into emergency rooms to receive treatment for injuries that are inf inflicted as a result of attempting suicide. Um, uh, we do see that males, men, are definitely more likely, they are actually four to five times more likely to commit suicide than women. Uh, but women are three times more likely to attempt suicide than they attempt. Remember, commit and attempt are two different. Attempt is uh, something that they, that they probably have done all the means to do so. Commit is actually having completed the act. So males definitely are seen to um, uh, are at a greater risk on on being suicidal. And uh, some of the uh, we will probably talk about some reasons maybe later. Um, but I think it's it's important to understand statistically it is shown that males are at a greater risk. Okay. So what I'd want to do and and before we um, before we move on. So what, what do I want to do through these two hours is um, for us to be informed, it's, it's a lot more to understand, to be informed, to recognize what can be certain warning signs and how is it that we can respond adequately to these warning signs because um, uh, suicide and other destructive behaviors um, you know, don't occur very often without a warning sign. It's it rather it rarely occurs without some type of a warning sign. So you know, we need to be aware of some of this and also learn and know how to minister. So before we go ahead, I think um, let's let's start with with having um, you know because I th I think it's really helpful 
when we first figure out and try and understand what is helpful, what is not helpful. And it's always best done through a role play or through, you know, through a, a counseling session. Okay. So uh, don't worry. Y'all don't have to be the counselors. I'll be the counselor, but I may need maybe two or three people to pretend to be suicidal and uh, we can have a conversation. Okay. And you've just come to me for help or someone who you're talking to. And uh, we'll just judge and see what are responses that are not effective. I think it, it's better when we, we do a role play like this because you have another person at the other end and they will actually tell you what they're really feeling. If I were to just give you uh, information and say, okay, don't do this, don't do this. You're saying, why not? I mean, that seems the most logical thing to do. But I think it's it's better understood when you have someone else on the other end to help you, uh, um, you know, have a peek into their minds or their their hearts as to what happens when a counselor or when someone is responding. Feeling too happy to even pretend. <laughs> okay, Samuel. All right, you're off the hook then. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably make the counselor want want to kill themselves, huh? <laughs> okay. So this is this is just for learning. So anyone who'd like to uh, pretend to be suicidal or or yeah, suicidal more than depressed. It's that you know you're you're probably thinking of killing yourself and. Uh, so it's just, just for us to build a conversation. So anybody, do I have any takers? This is the best way to learn. Shay. OK, great. Thank you, Shay. You're welcome, Pastor. Uh, OK, great, Shay. So you and I are going to have a conversation. And um, yeah, so you're coming to me because you're suicidal. OK, I'm not going to give you any other clues. Uh, you, could, you could. So the rest of you, I want you to observe. Um, the, you know what the count what me and she are doing or or, or are saying and uh, pick up pick up points def that needs improvement okay so uh yes she go ahead uh, good evening pastor um, good evening i have a lot on my mind right now mm -hmm. i want to kill myself I you messed up. Yes. Why would I you brought, want to do that? I brought a lot of shame to my parents. They okay. won't be happy with me. Yeah. Uh, so, um, by doing so, what's what are you going to gain? What's what are you going to achieve? That way, I don't have to feel any pain. I don't have to bring any disappointment to my parents. You think your parents would be happy if you do that? At least it would save them the shame and the disgrace of having a son who knows nothing better but just to bring shame. But if you do that, won't they be even more ashamed? I guess my existence on earth would short leave their dis their pain. Uh, do you understand that after doing that, uh, you know you're 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 a person who believes in God. So do you understand that by doing that, that's uh, that's not going to be too good for you. At this moment, I don't care. But look at eternity. You have you have eternal life and all of that, and so you don't want that either. No, I just want to leave. I can't carry this pain anymore. And this I think works. I think there's there's the spirit of death in you, and that's Why telling you to go kill yourself, isn't it? No. This is my decision. The, you know, when, when the evil one takes over, he takes over completely, that you lose judgment and insight in all of this. You need to be delivered, Shay. Of what? 
I mean, there's the spirit yeah. of death. No, I need to go. I need to die. I can't take um, this anymore. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray and ask for deliverance right now. Okay, are you with me? Yes, Pastor. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Shay. Shay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No <laughs> <laughs> okay all right okay so shay is one example okay so remember remember shay's example now i want another person to come up okay um again just being so sad, I'm, I'm going to take take another path right now okay so uh yeah so somebody else please you have to, you just have to be the person Who's uh, uh, who's coming suicidal? Okay, so um, um, you you don't have to be the counselor. Yeah, somebody else. Come on. I mean, this isn't hard. You just have to you just have to take cues and just uh, just speak. Can I try? <laughs> sure, Kennedy. Hi. Come. Yes, Kennedy. Go ahead. Hello. How are you? Hi, Kennedy. What brings you here today? I'm tired with this life. I'm tired with this life. You're tired with the life. Okay. What yeah. do you mean? Tired? You're tired with your life? My business is not working. My family is putting me out of pressure. And uh -huh. my bank after me. I don't know what to do. I've lost all my money. You've lost your money. Your business is not working. Your family is out of place. So oh, that must be hard. What do you plan to do with all of this? Ah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I have no idea, maybe I kill myself, maybe I leave this country, maybe I go somewhere else where people don't know me. Okay, you said certain options. You you want to go to another country, you would like to leave this place or even kill yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? Are you serious about that, Kennedy? Yeah, I have no other option. Now I'm fed up. My mind, everything, my brain is locked. Hmm. Don't you think you'll take a lot of attention for yourself when you do that, Kennedy? You're going to kill yourself. I mean, isn't that just being a little crybaby? All of I us go through so many difficult things. Thank you, but I think I'll be at peace with myself. Peace with I'm yourself? Good. Yeah, yeah. No more pain, no more struggle. See, we all go through that. I mean, who in the world doesn't have struggle, pain, difficulties with money? Who in the world doesn't have that? But no, I don't understand me. Uh, how old are you? How old are you, Kennedy? Um, ninety-four years. Ninety-four? Yeah. You're ninety-four. Okay. Anyway, anyway, soon you're gonna die. Why would you want to take out, take your life? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheaper option. It's the best. It's easier. I won't struggle with anybody. I won't sign any will. You know what I think? I think you're just craving for some attention. You're just being very cowardly in all of this. So what should I do? Live. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Kenneth. I'm so, I'm so sorry, guys. I hope people don't take this as an example and say this is how counselors should be. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I want one more person, just one more, just to uh, give you uh, another another perspective. Just one more person. Pastor, can I? Sure, Chaya. Come, yeah. come Chaya. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Good evening, uh... Hello, Chaya. Good evening. Yeah. I just want some help. Mm -hmm. This suicide thing is coming many times in my heart. And I tried also two, three times. And now yeah. again, I'm going, I'm feeling I must do this again. And I should end my life. Hmm. 
Okay. So, um, uh, Chaya, um, okay, you say you want to, you're, you're feeling, you're having these feelings of suicide. Okay. Um, how are things at your home? How are things at your home? Oh, it's not very, you can say, very okay. It's not very much good and okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay. What about your work? There also I feel disappointed. Okay. Is there any place, I'm sure there's some place that you're feeling uh, good, isn't it? What would that be? Which place is that that you're feeling happy? No, I don't feel. I just feel if I go other places also, I'll get disappointed. And then uh -huh. I will feel more sad. So it is better to die. Okay. Um, all right. You said your your home is like the, you don't find happiness at your home. You don't find happiness at work, wherever you go. Uh, what about when you talk to friends? How is it? Do you have some good friends? Do you have no, some good. I don't uh, have any friends. You don't have any friends also. No. Uh, who all do you live with? I just don't want to live at all. Uh, I know that you told me. Who do you live with? Who are the other people you live with? I live with my children and my husband. Oh. Okay. Oh, those, so they are there. Your children and husband and all are there, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Um, how? Where do you work, Chaya? <laughs> Uh, some office. You work in an office. And so you have colleagues and friends who you have lunch with and all of that, no? No, most of the time I sit alone and I don't interact with anyone. You don't interact. You go to church, no, Chaya? Yeah, I go. That is the only one place I go. But ah. just... Okay, nice, nice, mm -hmm. nice. Good. So you go to church. Good. Okay. So what? Uh, what are some of the things you can learn from your church? Actually, I go there just to come myself hmm. and I sit most of hmm. the time. I am not paying attention what pastor is preaching or going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you, it calms you, no? Yeah. Okay, very good. Excellent. That is, that's good. So, you know, you should probably be in a place where you are more calm. Okay. Yeah. Like, you can go to church and be calm there. That'll be a great thing to do. Okay? Yes. All right. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's let's look at these three examples of Shay, of Kennedy, and Chaya. What was the person trying to do in all three? Shay's case. Okay, Shay, tell me how you felt. I didn't feel helped at all. Okay. <laughs> I felt, okay. I felt like, I, I felt like I was uh, spiritually lost, and uh, um, in a way, um, responsible for how I felt. In a way, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I didn't feel any connection mm -hmm. with, with the counselors. Um, with the cat with the with, with the counselor there was no connection or any way to even dive into the cause the root cause of why i was feeling that way and why i wanted to commit suicide mm. um, okay yeah so yeah all right okay so there wasn't there wasn't a connection didn't feel helped in fact you probably would have felt even more guilty and even more <laughs> shamed right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's okay. true. All right. Yeah. So then the, there was here, what what was the counselor trying to do was to assign guilt towards uh, towards the person. Yes, Rupa, I think you have uh, an observation. You want to say something? Ma'am, I uh, just wanted to share my inability. Mm -hmm. When uh, people are really going through these thoughts of... Uh, suicide very difficult to get through to them we, i feel so helpless mm. and uh, they'll be so lost and crying and depressed uh, i feel mm. so lost yeah you're, you're, 
you're right yeah. and and that's exact and and often because we feel lost in fact all these three that we i tried to show you just helps you see that when people are being talked to about suicide they are uncomfortable mm -hmm. and the the counselor or, or the person who who they're talking to wants to get away from that conversation somehow and so mm -hmm. in their minds if you look to the chaya there was an avoidance of the topic in itself this this mm -hmm. person was going and talking about work home church and finally found something and says okay you know you just just deal with that there but mm -hmm. so uncomfortable to be in a space of dealing with that discomfort of talking about suicide so you're right in saying that often there is so much of discomfort that uh, uh, that that even people who are listeners are not able to figure out what to do so so that's what we're going to going to pick up through this uh, through this lesson okay, okay all right uh, yeah so kennedy in kennedy's uh, um what was the counselor attempting to do there kennedy tell me how you felt yes maxim go ahead yeah kennedy go on go on yes uh, I felt no much encouragement not to do what I was supposed to, what I wanted to do. Okay. Then secondly, you didn't consider my age, given that I was advanced <laughs> in age. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I can have seen another practical example, there is our neighbor of ours who had a jealousy for Red Bull, and I think he was well off. There's one day he just jumped from the fourth floor and he crashed uh -huh. himself and he died. So it was really, it really affected us. So we felt that mm. we could not really understand what was happening. Happening. We had yeah. good business, we had properties, and all of a sudden he just killed himself. Mm. And what we came to discover later, he had problems with the banks and the financiers. I think they were harassing him. There was no, there was a big kind of communication breakdown. Mm -hmm. So they mm. could just say the of his life. And it was a very sad thing for us. Mm. Very mm. sad. Yeah, I right. think well, you didn't consider my age, you didn't consider my income, what problems trigger mm. that. Yeah, mm. but anyway, thank yeah. you. <laughs> right. So, so this the, the person didn't even uh, one didn't even delve into anything at all to um, to understand your situation. That was one. Secondly, uh, felt that you were just being you know made comments like you're just being a baby or you're just seeking attention. Or you're just, uh, you know, wasn't taking the, the. in fact, you didn't, um, I mean, your role play was so good that you didn't even come forth and say, hey, I want to die, die. But you said, you know, I want to run away or I want to go to another country or maybe kill myself. You said it in passing, you know, it was just in passing. And uh, that wasn't. That was picked up because of this, but but generally, you know, in some of those conversations, it's not been picked up. It's overlooked and saying, you know, it looks like you're just um, trying to get attention. Okay, so that's good. Uh, Chaya, oh, sorry, Max said you had something to say. Yes, of course, it's about you and say not uh, Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. You Go said ahead. you as a counselor, you said let us play at the end. So I was thinking, why you said that word? Is that God, is Holy Spirit should lead you in counseling? Or you want to play to say, to change his mind? That's why I was thinking about it. Why you said, let us play when you're trying to pray, help pray. him? I said, let us pray. pray. Yes. Uh-huh. So okay. You, oh, you, you were wondering why we said that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, and uh, Chaya's case, Chaya, what did you, I think Chaya has written something. Uh, she's written counseling is not uh, to understand, in, not a, in a place of listening, giving advices and too soon no, no, to explain eternity. Uh, no, this I told the first uh, rule. Please. First one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, I just, uh, I'm not very much comfortable with my counselor. Okay. Uh, because I wanted uh, my counselor should ask me more and listen to me more, and then okay, okay, uh, counselor should give me something which will help me more uh, to okay. come out of these feelings. 
I felt okay. this. So it was not uh, uh, very helpful. Sorry, not helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's perfectly okay. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I wanted you all to do. So with yes. with Chai in Chai's case, what we what I was attempting to do was to change the topic because as a counselor, I'm I'm just so uncomfortable at the conversation. I was attempting to change the uh, entire topic and uh, you know try and figure out something else or something that that was more comfortable for me. Okay, so that 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 was what I was trying to um, uh, help to uh, show. So these are generally, if you look at it, three large scenarios of um, of of ways that people respond. Either you completely avoid because you are so overwhelmed with the information and you don't know how to help, or you spiritualize it so much um, that. Um, that there isn't any kind of empathy and understanding and listening or third is you dismiss it you dismiss the entire conversation and try and uh, minimize the pain that they're feeling and and get them to cope in some other way okay so these are generally broad ways of how um uh, people generally deal with this okay uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh I'm, and let me just put up my slide and uh I want to take you all through some. Yes, Abdi, go ahead. Yeah, I think you have a question. Go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, while you were explaining this, one thing that occurred to my mind was in big cities and in places, you know, we have counselors to help. Correct. But if, like, I come from a small town and, uh, you know, there have been people, uh, even though their churches are big, everything, but people actually do not have any access to any counselors. They don't know that they can go to anybody. Right. And uh, they, they, they are simply, you know, tied up. So hmm. in that case, uh, you know, ma'am, how, how can they be helped? Like uh, if they, they do not have a counselor to talk to and they don't have nobody whom they can confide in with their information because when I shared this, uh, I think last week also, when we were talking about this family, uh, their son was mm -hmm. suicidal. Mm -hmm. And the problem is they were so scared of talking with somebody that they thought it would be like a gossip more than a help. Mm -hmm. So uh, one person actually in the same family, exactly last year, one child uh, attempted and uh, committed suicide and he, he okay. they lost the child. Now their own child real you know in the in the same family so now they were so scared of talking to others and they were not seeking any kind of help and it became such a difficult situation because they can't trust people there is no professional help there is no uh, church help uh, mm -hmm. that is the kind of scenario ma'am that we, i have observed particularly in that so i mean yeah. Yeah, so what that's exactly why this is some of these topics are so important to build awareness just to know maybe, you know, even when someone who's suicidal comes to you, you don't actually have to have very many counseling skills. There are key important things when someone who is suicidal talks to you, what are you supposed to be taking care of? And we're going to look at some of that. And um, so what we also do is we hold workshops just to allow people to know what depression is, what suicide is, and how is it at a basic level that you can help or you can minister. Often it's an acceptant heart just to know that when someone is talking about something to take them seriously, that when they're talking about dying, it's not to dismiss it. It's not to spiritualize it, it's not to suppress it, but to be in a place of um, accepting that they are going through that pain. Often just someone showing that sense of support is 80% of times when they just feel so much better that someone has heard you out. Okay, so that is one, your availability, your acceptance that what they're telling you is something that is real. Uh, and something that you are willing to uh, understand. Secondly, your responses, how you respond. Remember, these are, you cannot give ready answers. All because someone is talking to you, 
someone who is suicidal does not mean that you're going to give them an answer and they are not going to be suicidal again. That's not the point. The point is where you're able to show a heart of understanding, a heart of empathy and being able to respond to that. The third one is to ensure that there is extended support system that you enlist when someone talks to you about suicide. It's so depending on your assessment or depending on what you can see, either uh, um, uh, rolling in someone else as a support partner, maybe getting them medical help or getting them any form of um, a support that they would require. You know, you, there is also a certain plan that you would do to help them to keep themselves safe at that moment that they have spoken to you. And then again, a follow up. So if there are at least these few things that can be done, you are bringing down the risk of self uh, of a suicide to a good 60 percent. That, that's what research has said. If if there are people who are just able to come to a place of uh, empathetic, empathetically listening, empathetically responding, getting the right kind of help and support system, it brings down the incidence to 60%. And that's a great, I think that's a great percentage. And so that's why, you know, to be able to help others in teaching them, how is it that you need to respond? It's like first aid, you know, just like if you would get yourself cut or you, someone has a heart attack, what would you do? There are certain first aid measures. And this is, and I would see it as these are certain mental health first aid measures, just knowing how to respond, how to listen, how to be actively with them as they are, uh, as they are talking. Okay. So that, that's what I want to present to y'all so that y'all are also in a place of awareness for yourself that, you know, you don't quickly just say, okay, maybe I'm I'm not equipped to this, go meet with somebody else, but just being in a place of um, openly giving them a listening ear, giving them a sense of support and belief and trust that you are engaging with them and also finding a couple of things which which I will I will help look into as, as we're going through. Okay. Now I'm just going to put down a couple of statements and I'd like you all to quickly uh, tell me what you think think about this. So first, now the next two slides is basically an attitudinal change that all of us need to have and understand when we are dealing with suicide. Okay, so I'm quickly going to bring about um, sentences, you could you could just uh, put your thoughts on chat. Okay. Uh, okay, what do you think suicide attempts are about seeking attention? Is that true? Or is that? Is that false? What do you think? It's all about seeking attention. Okay. It's true, Pastor. It's true. Okay. Anybody else? False. It's false. Okay. All right. So you can be very off now. Now there are there are different kinds. Um. Uh. You know, of I, I would say of cases or or of people who come forward and um. Uh, you know who bring about suicidal ideation. Now whether whether they have an intention of attention or not okay we are we need to be careful to understand that you know we we go with the premise that it is not about seeking attention okay so yes i agree that there are sometimes some situations especially if you remember when we looked at mental health there are um people with personality issues and sometimes they use that as an emotional threat or use that as a way but then it does not mean that they will not be impulsive and attempt it either so even if it is a case of seeking attention you cannot minimize the fact and the truth that they would probably they could probably uh, pro proceed with attempting or committing committing suicide but largely we do see and as as we go into factors and reasons you will understand that largely a lot of times it is not about seeking attention it is it there are other factors that lead people to think about suicide okay next one people who commit suicide are being selfish and think it is the easy way out you could just unmute and speak or, uh, you know, quickly, don't don't wait for me to call. Uh, what are your thoughts? People um, who come Pastor, Go ahead. Um, so I don't believe they think it's being 
they're not being selfish, but they believe it's the easy way out. They're not being selfish, but they believe it's the easy way out of it. Yeah. But okay. it's difficult for them, but they believe this is just like the easy way out. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, it takes, it's a huge lot of courage that they actually take to doing that. So uh, there is, it, it, it often is some, something that becomes very, very significantly difficult for them. So uh, they are, they, the pain is so intense that they think that this is the best way out. Okay. However, they are not in the thoughts of, okay, that I, that it is, uh, it is a, it is a selfish thing to do, but it is a thought. Generally, it's a thought of, I am saving somebody else from their misery. Like, you know, Shay's example, I am a burden and, a, and a, um, embarrassment to my family. And, uh, you know, they would be better off than that. So it is not about being selfish, but, I agree with with Shay. What he says is, it's the it's the way out that could be that may be the only way out to get them out of that pain. But then it takes a lot of courage and strength to even come to that place of understanding. Taisha, I think you have a question. You said partly what I was going to say. Um, I think, as you said, they think it's the best way out, and maybe in some cases they think it's the only way out. That's right. That's right. I, yes. Let me share an experience. I had, a, I used to do travel and teaching, and a, a student of mine that was in Colombia, I saw on the Facebook page that when I met him, he was in the last grade of high school to go to college, and uh, some time has passed, and he is in college. Then I saw where they said, "Rest in peace." So I said, "What happened?" Uh, when I reached out, they said he committed suicide. I said, what? But they were saying it was COVID time and it was so much and the school work, college work was uh, pressuring and he felt isolated. Um, a close friend of his um, was telling me, but nobody um, paid him any mind. He was crying out for help, but he thought this was the only way out for him. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Taisha. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the next one, which is um, often there is a clear reason for every suicide. There is a clear reason for every suicide. What do you think? That people do commit suicide because there is a reason. Any thoughts on this? I, uh, for me, I don't, a clear reason. I think in their head, they're confused. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's a clear reason, but they have a reason. Mm -hmm. And they have, and they think it's valid. Mm -hmm. so I, mm -hmm. I don't think clear mm -hmm. is the word I would, I would use to describe. All right. Yeah. right, right. Yes, Christopher, Shay, please go ahead. You could just unmute and speak. So, so what I believe is there's a root cause, but layered mm -hmm. as blood with so many things. Mm -hmm. So there's a stack of many reasons why they're about to commit suicide, but there's a very root cause for why they have come to that point. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Okay. That's great. Christopher, do you have something to say? Oh, uh, yes. I, um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. We can. Uh, no, I, so I, I think yes, I, the reasoning could be on the on the on the part of the um, the person who wants to commit suicide, uh, and uh, that may not be clear at all to you know people who are uh, you know you know friends of the helping right yeah the helping people yeah so yeah. Um, uh, and uh, the reasoning also can be also you know distorted also. It could be mm. a combination of things and it all sort of, you know, just comes to a boil and or comes to a head where, you know, they mm -hmm. feel that they, uh, uh, you know, there's no way out and no, no other way out of the, of this mm -hmm. situation. Mm. Uh, just a point on the previous one, mm -hmm. uh, the word easy, I don't know. I'm not sure that is that not maybe the, the most appropriate way. Um, uh, I think it's sometimes it's the only way out. I agree, but, uh, the easy thing, 
because uh, as you said you know if, if they are showing so much of courage uh, to do something like that um, then uh, it obviously is not the easy way out you know because easy means you know something that will just come you know, kind of naturally right so um uh, yeah so just comment on that good good that's that's great great yeah so we will look at certain reasons again it is true that there isn't just a reason for a suicide that it could be things that have multiplied over time that is accumulating factor a lot of factors that come up and just being in a sense of absolute um disillusionment a sense of confusion and they take the step to clear out to feel that they can't clear out at all okay so is there a specific reason maybe there isn't one but there could be multiple ones probably something that they may not even be clearly being able to art articulate to okay just they f the sense they may just tell you i just feel hopeless i don't see a way forward okay but there may be multiple things that's actually uh, propelling the the decision forward okay next one this is very important asking somebody whether they are suicidal and discussing whether they have a plan or method will simply give them the idea and increase their risk of suicide true or false what do you think asking somebody hey are you suicidal or and I've kind of noticed that you've been down. Um, are you? Do you? Are you considering suicide? You considering to harm yourself, kill yourself? Have you had thoughts of it? Would it increase their risk of suicide? Come on, commit to something. It's okay. It's all right. That's how we learn. Yeshe, go ahead. I I think it varies and depends on how this is communicated and okay. i think this situation um the situation the way depending on the situation the way this is um, um the way this is asked mm -hmm. uh, would would make it wrong will, will either increase the chance the risk of suicide or not so i i i don't think there's a there's a one-off answer for this. I think mm -hmm. it's dependent on the individual and whatever the situation um, this person is going through. Okay. All right. Thank I you, think it, it might decrease. It cannot increase the risk of suicide. It might decrease, you're saying, is it? That's what you said? Yeah. Yes, okay. I think it might decrease, not increase. Not because increase. you can know that people are aware about what I want to do. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Rose, you said a person who is contemplating suicide almost always has a plan in mind already when they come out of their depression stage, and muster enough energy. They will end. At, they will and can carry out their plan. Okay, that's true. Okay, that that the question here is if you were to probe and ask are you suicidal would it would it instill in them a desire to go just go do it is it was the question okay now uh what see so so something we need to understand is that when people are contemplating suicide they are also doing subtle means of reaching out for help okay maybe they go talk to a person or, you know, they kind of, they, there are some signs, there are some telltale signs, some warning signs that they put in like clues to help, uh, you know, it, it's just put in and hoping that somebody would identify and help. Okay, so they, some of them may be quite direct, some of them may be quite indirect, but it is important when when something that you, not just when you notice, but actually in a counseling session, when there is an assessment of anxiety and depression, this is something we always ask. We always ask whether there have been thoughts of self-harm, there's been thoughts of suicide, there have been death wishes. And every time, and I can tell you that every time, there are people who do come up and tell you yes, I have considered it, or I have thought about it, or I am planning one, they do it. 
it does not increase the risk of uh, an attempt or a commitment. Although, like like I think Rose already said, when people do come up with a with a mind that is made up, okay. Uh, I wouldn't agree that they will end up carrying out that because it really matters on the relationship and the interaction you're having with them. I'll give you a, a very good example. I have a person who who I'm seeing right now having significant issues in marriage and um, the, the spouse walked away and uh, he felt everything was done. He planned the date, he planned the place, he planned where to go. He planned everything, gave me the plan, Okay, spoke about the plan, says whatever. And it was the spouse's a very special day for the spouse and wanted to do it on that day. So it, it was a very clear cut plan, which he engaged with me and told me about the plan. Now, it was so much so that had had started, um, you know, all kind of financial matters were all being settled. But through the conversation, you know, uh, as we spoke, as as hope was brought about, as focus was changed from 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 this to to other, and there were certain questions I think that really helped him to understand this, and that left, you know, hope began. Hope somehow came about. In fact, as recently as this morning, because there were significant other changes that came about, um, he said he's felt it again two times, but then something we had discussed uh, made him to go reach out to somebody, had a conversation there, rekindled hope, came back saying, I have a new lease of life. Okay, So it is important to keep this in mind to keep asking, to keep checking. It is very, very vital because that's one way that, uh, so something that I keep telling my my counselees or, you know, sometimes who are suicidal is I tell them, you know, I care about what decisions you are making of how you want, you're taking your life. I care about this and I am um, standing alongside with you to help you go through this difficult phase. Just that, hearing that itself makes them feel there is somebody alongside with them to take them through that. That in itself reduces the risk of self-harm significantly. So should you ask? Yes, you should ask. In fact, whoever comes to me, I ask them this one question. Uh, it, of course, it, it really depends on what like, they're talking about, sadness or depression, and not if they're talking about something you know, they want to uh, increase in their career. If I don't have any sniff of, of, of a sad mood or depression, I wouldn't. But generally, people who come with anxiety, depression, failed relationships, um, uh, issues uh, with finance, with grief, with, with the sense of lack of coping, this is something that we are trained to ask. So it is important to ask. It will not frighten them. It will not want make them want to do so uh, to to commit suicide. It's not like this, you know. You you know we have the same notion even about about sex. You say you know you talk to somebody, uh, talk to children about uh, educating them about sex. Maybe they want to go try that out. That is not true. Okay, because the more the awareness that someone is walking alongside with them really helps them to to deal with the kind of struggle that they're going through. Yes, Taisha, do you have a question or a or a response? Taisha. Okay. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, I, Taisha. I was re making reference to there was a situation in the in the media where. Um, a friend, two friend, the male wanted to commit suicide. And so he texts the female friend and says, I'm thinking about killing myself. Her response was, go ahead and kill yourself. Why do I care? And so he went and killed himself. And they are charging her with, um, what is it? I I'm not sure what the technical term, but pretty much manslaughter. I'm not sure mm. if you heard about that. And it's... <laughs> Uh, mm. it, it's a media frenzy. If you Google it, you'll see, and they're really charging her for that because they're saying it's you are aiding the person killing themselves. You didn't help, mm. you know. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. And so really, you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's not when people say these things, as we see, 
Absolutely. I, I so agree. Okay, just quickly, uh, just, um, just a few more. Suicide ideation is a sign of deviance. Um, what do you think? That the, the very fact that they have ideas like this is maybe they are crazy. It's something wrongs with them, wrong with them. Okay, it is not a sign of deviance, okay? Look back at your own life. I'm sure we're all testimony of the fact that the thoughts have come to us, you know, that we should end our lives somehow. Maybe not right now, but at some point of our life stages, of our life experiences, I've had it. I don't want it. I don't. Ideation. Ideation is not, not the desire to commit it, but just, you know, maybe I should just die. Maybe I should just, I wish I was dead or wish I could just fall off from here and I die, right? So it is not a sign of deviance. Um, Mm, at all okay people who talk about suicide won't do it people who talk about suicide won't do it again i think this refers back to my earlier question earlier statement that we need to take seriously anybody who who brings about that that kind of an ideation okay suicide is a purely personal decision so you should allow them to do what they what what they think is right for them that is not true, okay? Yes, it, it is a personal decision, but it is a cry for help. And it, it is something that they are hoping to have someone uh, help them through that, through that situation. So you can't say that's, you know, like how you say, um, you know, the, they've decided to walk this path, let them do it the way that they want to. You cannot leave it at that. This is, this is, uh, uh, this is like SOS, okay? You need to get, get, help be upbeat when you respond to a depressed person you know the way that uh, when 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 Shay's um, role play I mean he did such a good job and I felt so hypocritical the way that I was sounding so you know offhandish and um, up one you've got to come to a place of being you don't sound depressed but you need to sound empathetic you need to sound that you feel the pain that you, you could hear the pain in his voice you could actually hear the struggle that he was going through so to be able to experience that and not you know by your joy or by your happiness or by looking at something uh, that, that is that, that they can look forward to like in Chaya's uh, example you know okay you found something where you can get peace you know just go there and get that that's that's not how you would respond okay people who really want to kill themselves are beyond help untrue uh, that is not true. Like I said, it's a cry for help and they are looking for every resource to be able to get them to that place of receiving uh, receiving help. Okay. All right. Um, so let's close for a break and uh, we will come back uh, at uh, it's 1055 on my clock and we will come back at 115 to continue on. <laughs> 